Well, well, well. If it isn't, <laughs> <laughs> that's tumbled over the chair. If it isn't the listeners, <laughs> what a great spot. Uh, yes, portends for you know good things in the future. Oh yes, yeah. Of course, yeah. So this is the podcast called uh, Politics, although I call it Politics, <laughs> right? And this episode is about, or the title of this episode is Ant Man Quantumania. Right. I'm Presh, and I'm Ty. Uh, so I know usually we start off with the news, but I think uh, we should do some cleanup from last week because, okay. like, I haven't posted last week's episode. I've just listened to it a few times, so I just wrote down like stuff that uh, I thought this is not based on you know feedback from other people. This is just stuff I saw, <laughs> heard. I mean, <laughs> not so, so. <laughs> you you are the feedback. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. So we mentioned the Cameron family meeting, but never like properly spoke about it. Oh. Right. Yeah. I would say that he's like Napoleon, James Cameron. Yes. But in the Cameron family meeting, his children plus his wife, her name is Susie Amos. Oh, okay. Not (laughs) James Cameron's wife. Yes. They like uh, take him to task, right? And call him out on his bullshit and say, hey man, you're too like, uh, too much like Napoleon. (laughs) (laughs) Too Napoleon-esque. Yes. You need to, you need to like uh, settle down, like calm down, right? And uh, just be more chill. Okay. And, uh, that's kind of the same journey that Jake takes in the movie, right? He's like bossing everyone like a Napoleon, like a Napoleon. <laughs> <laughs> and towards the end, uh, he says, "I see now." When he he gets rescued by Loak, yeah, right, and he realize, like I said uh, in last episode, I don't think he he would put it in those words precisely, but he realizes that he's done see, the ideology he was following was wrong. Yeah, right. He, I don't think he knows the correct thing to do just that what he was doing is wrong yeah right okay. uh so that was just the first thing yeah. second thing is how old is Saria? i have no idea hmm. 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 so based on her being low ex love interest she should be around like 14 yes right i just like to state in un- <laughs> no uncertain terms that this is an anti-pedophile podcast right <laughs> Other podcasts who haven't explicitly stated, <laughs> we should just assume that they're pro-pedophile, right? What are they hiding? Why will they not come out and say that they are anti-pedophile like we did? Huh? Okay. And I'm only speaking about myself because last week my, my co-host said a 14-year-old girl was, quote-unquote, very pretty. So, you what? know. No, but what does that imply? What? Just that she's pretty. All right. There's nothing more to that. Why are you looking at a 14-year-old girl and commentating on her looks? Can I not say... It's the same as saying, like, an 80-year-old woman. Whatever, whatever. I'm just pointing out that uh, it was inappropriate for you to call her very pretty. Okay, I'm sorry for calling her very pretty. All right. Anyway. I also realize that I keep saying, uh, how can I say this? And once again... (laughs) Like... (laughs) You know, like, uh, a drinking game. Yeah. So, like, people, they'll watch a movie or maybe listen to a podcast or something. When somebody says, like, a, a phrase that they <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> keep on saying, uh, you know, they take a shot. Yeah. <laughs> if they were playing a drinking game with that first episode, they'd be dead. <laughs> they'd be dead. <laughs> Kill the listeners. <laughs> yeah, I just... But what people are not realizing is, I don't know how I could say this. <laughs> and what they're also not realizing is, the point came up once again. So that's why I said those things. <laughs> so you had to yeah. say once again. Yeah. So if anyone's making fun of me, you're making fun of someone with an issue. What if I have Tourette's or something and I can't help myself? Do you hmm? have Tourette's? All right. That's not the issue. <laughs> <laughs> the issue is I'm being bullied <laughs> in the future because once again, no one's heard this. <laughs> but when they do get it, you know, like uh, in a WhatsApp group, they're going to find some way to take that audio clip of me (laughs) and make it the WhatsApp profile picture for for our group. (laughs) Uh, Okay, anyway. Um, Neytiri and Spider. Okay, yes. Neytiri, uh, uh, Zoe Saldana and Spider. Yes. Right? They have a very, like, uh, Catelyn Stark and Jon Snow type relationship. Okay. I know you don't know what that means. No, I have no idea. (laughs) So in Game of Thrones, right... Jon Snow is uh, Ned Stark's bastard son. Right. And Catelyn Stark is his wife. Okay. So he brought Jon Snow back from when he was on the wall. Yeah. And the assumption is that he had a, a baby with someone, you know, while he was at yeah. war and he brought it back. So Catelyn is very, like, 
doesn't like this child. She's very. Uh, yes. How can I say this? <laughs> Fuck it! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! She just doesn't like. Him. She doesn't like him in the same way Natiri doesn't like Spider. Yes. But uh, there is a question I had, which we didn't bring up last week. It's like, does she hate him because he's human, or because he is Quaritch's son? That's that's a very good question. Uh, mm. Does she know that he's Quaritch's son? I think so. I think everybody knows, right? Okay. Yeah. But whatever, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's just one. I just it's a minor thing. Uh, I was just wondering about. Um, the leader of the clan is called Olo Iktan. Yeah. You know, we were saying uh, Jake has two titles. One is Torok Makto and the, the other is the leadership. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't remember. It's Olo Iktan. Okay. All right. And uh, we are talking about the George Lucas quote. The, the quote is, these are movies about space wizards for children. Yes. Right? And that's what gets people upset. They're like, no, no, Star Wars is for adults. It's for, you know, whatever, whatever. Yeah. The creator is telling you this was made in with children in mind. <laughs> not that it's you're not allowed to watch it, that you're not allowed to enjoy it, just this was made for children. Yeah. That's all. Makes sense. That's the beginning yeah. and end of the point. <laughs> right. Nice. All right. So that's all I had to say about last week. Do you have any thoughts i know you haven't been listening back no. because yeah obviously i'm the only one with the <laughs> yeah I, it's kind of hard to listen yes when yes I yes can't. but just thinking back to last week um i mean it was uh, as all first podcasts are mm. it was a little bit rough around the edges oh. but as we get into this more and more we will uh We'll obviously need it up and All right. figure things out. Speaking on behalf of the listeners, you're a, you're just a fucking hater. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you're there's, all our listeners. There's, your, there's hate in your heart. <laughs> <laughs> you are all of our listeners. All right, right whatever, now. whatever. Let's go on to the news, right? Okay. Have you seen Catch Me If You Can? Uh, yes, I have. All right, it's a movie from like 2004, I want to say. I, it was a while ago. All right, in the early 2000s, right? Yeah. Directed by Steven Spielberg, starring... Uh, Co-starring DiCaprio and Tom Hanks, right? Yes. Uh, DiCaprio is this uh, guy, he plays a guy named Frank Abagnale Jr. Yep. Right, and Tom Hanks is the, I want to say FBI or police, whatever yeah, that's chasing him, He's right? the law enforcement. Yes, yes, yes. So, it came out this week that the real life Frank Abagnale Jr. Yeah. He lied about his lies. <laughs> so, what? <laughs> all the things he was famous for, he, he didn't really do. <laughs> And like, <laughs> I just think this shows the decay of society. Right? <laughs> if you can't trust a con man not to lie to you, who can you trust? <laughs> who can you trust? <laughs> who can you? <laughs> if we don't have <laughs> trust in our con man, who can we trust? That's 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 what I'm putting to you, the audience. Who can we trust? So, he's he's a he's a con man that lied about being a con man. Yes. That's impressive. That's what I'm saying. Now that I've read, <laughs> when I read it, I was like, hmm, this is actually a little bit more impressive than <laughs> <laughs> being the actual con man. Uh, but yeah, whatever, just a, a light news story to, you know, ease us into it because yeah. uh, it's been a hectic week. You know, as I was doing the, uh, well, I don't like sit down and, uh, you know, go through the news stories. Like yeah. if, if I'm like listening uh, to a podcast or like uh, see something uh, I'll write it down I'll just jot it down yeah. so and then at the end of the week like I'll try cut out stuff that uh, doesn't seem relevant or whatever but yeah this week okay. it's just been yeah. <laughs> hectic shirt after hectic shirt yeah. uh, something I actually didn't write down here but I was just reading about <laughs> yeah <laughs> A little peek behind the curtain. I took a full shirt before <laughs> <laughs> before we started recording. <laughs> there you go. All the listenership we built from last week. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I was just scrolling news on my <laughs> phone. <laughs> and I did hear about this last week. I just uh, I, I just forgot to, you know, read more into it. But apparently Donald Trump might be arrested today. Oh, yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. He tweeted about, well, he didn't tweet about it. So he has this, he has something called yeah. Truth Social, which is yeah, his, his own, uh, social media, social media company, yeah. right? He said that. Uh, so in twenty is twenty sixteen election. Yep. Uh, do you know who Stormy Daniels is? Yes. She's the porn star who allegedly, you know, Trump hired. Yes. But he hired her with campaign funds, which is mm. <laughs> you're not not allowed to do that, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> 
if he had just used his own money, it would be fine. But, uh, you know, this... Uh, so they, they're charging him because he used that money inappropriately. Yeah. You're supposed to use campaign funds on the campaign, <laughs> right? <laughs> but, yeah, he... Uh, so, uh, apparently, like, news got out and got back to him that he's... That is going to be a guilty verdict. So we're, yeah. we're all finding out today. It's Tuesday today. Just yeah. another <laughs> little peek behind the curtain. We uh, usually record on Sundays. I'm saying usually. We've only done it once. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Tuesday is our usual day from now on. But yeah. Maybe. Tuesday is a public holiday here in South Africa. Not every Tuesday. Just <laughs> this current Tuesday. <laughs> every Tuesday we get off. <laughs> uh, it's just a new public holiday every week. Yeah. So it happens to be a public holiday today. And uh, I was busy on Sunday. So we moved it to today. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, we will find out later yeah. if he's going to jail or not. <laughs> uh, all right. The next thing is Iran and Saudi Arabic diplomatic relations were restored this week. Got there eventually. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and you're thinking, all right, this is great. This is a, a win for the Biden White House, the Joe Brandon White House, right? Sure. But wait a second. This deal was brokered by China. <gasps> oh my god. <laughs> what? what, what, what? <laughs> okay, just to give you a small background about the Iran Saudi Arabia conflict. Do you know anything about it? Um, it's a conflict between Iran and Saudi Arabia. <sighs> all right, all right, all right. Um, so, like, they've been enemies for years, right? Yes. Uh, I, I don't think there's like a single thing you could point at and be like, oh, we're enemies because of that reason. It's just like a yeah. bunch of small things, like small. I don't, <laughs> I'm saying small, but like I, I assume to them it felt big, right? Yeah. So a bunch of these conflicts happen. So it's just been, they've been enemies for a long time. So nobody can really remember where it started. But like the yeah. subtext of these conflicts is that uh, Iran is a Shia, a Shia country. Yeah. It's a, how can I say this? Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> it's a sect of uh, Islam. Yes. Right? So you have Sunni Muslims, you have Shia Muslims. There, there's different types of Muslims. Yes. It's similar to, you know, like Catholics and uh, Protestants. Yeah. There was a great schism in Christianity where those two groups broke. Similarly, yes. uh, Shia and Sunni, they have different... They both believe in Islam, just uh, different interpretations, essentially. Right? Yes. So Iran is a Shia country. And uh, Saudi Arabia is a Sunni. Well, so not uh, the majority of the people. Are they. It's not like every single person <laughs> is of that religion. Just the majority. And the yes. leadership of those countries are of that particular denomination. Yes. Right? Uh, so, yeah. But, like, the straw that broke the camel's back, as it were, mm-hmm. happened in uh, on the 2nd of January 2016, right? Okay. 47 people were put to death in several Saudi cities, including prominent Shiite cleric Namir al Namir. Ah. Right? So, which is Iran's uh, type of yeah. Islam. Yeah. Right? Protesters of the executions responded by demonstrating in Iran's capital, Tehran. Oh. Right? I that same that. day, a few protesters would eventually ransack the Saudi embassy in Tehran and later set it ablaze. Due to this tension, several cold wars were started, and the hope is that. You know, with the diplomatic tensions being relations being dist- <laughs> <laughs> being restored, right? The tensions will go. Yes. Yeah. So, like, so since twenty sixteen, they haven't been having diplomatic relations up until this week, where the Chinese ambassador, you know, yeah. brokered relations back. Yeah. Right. But their conflict has turned into a cold war in the Middle East. Yes. So. Iran are, fun, are funding certain factions and wars uh, across the Middle East and yeah. Saudi Arabia on the other side of the war. So yeah. one of them is the war in Yemen. Yeah. Right. Uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, basically Yemen is going through like a, a hunger crisis. It's a man-made famine. Yes. Because like Saudi Arabia is like blo- blocking imports and stuff. Yeah. Right. The war in that country is killing a number of people, right? Yeah. So like... Uh, the hope is that, you know, that diplomatic relations are restored, that these cold wars, these smaller events will, you know, they'll provide ease up. Some yes, they'll ease up, right? Yeah. 
So the war in Yemen is one of them. The other one is in Syria with the uh, Bashar al-Assad. Yeah. The butcher. Yes. Not <laughs> Licha. <laughs> <laughs> Not Lissandro Martinez. Yes. Uh, the other butcher. The real butcher who <laughs> literally butchers people. <laughs> An earned nickname, not United <laughs> fans trying to make the small guy seem <laughs> tough, right? So yeah, that's what uh, this whole thing is about. Okay. Uh, yeah. w- 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 China, <laughs> yeah. But once I was going to say once again, <laughs> once I'm, again, yeah. So the the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party. Yes, I don't. Well, they are left wing. Okay. But they're very like centrist. So centrally left wing. They center left. Okay. They're not. It's not how I would run a country, is what I'm saying. Ah. So I have okay. critiques of the CCP. Yes. But I'm not. How can I? I'm not on their side. Yes. I just. Uh, I think it's funny that America <laughs> <laughs> got their asses attitude. They're like, because uh, in their mind, in America's minds, they the like. The world uh, police of, you yeah, know, the world police, yeah. right? They the ones who, you know, who sought this out, and China's stepping up, and this actually leads into another story we're going to get to uh, just now, right? But right. Uh, um, it's also because America is uh, what's it when your friends, uh, an allies, ally? allies, yeah. <laughs> they're allies with Saudi Arabia, yeah. right? Yes. So obviously they can't be trusted to broker a deal because you're allies with one of the. The warring faction. So yeah. obviously, <laughs> the other side is not going to trust you to. Yeah. So there was no way that America could have done it, even if they wanted to, which they don't. Yeah. Right. Uh, so yeah. Yeah. Uh, the next thing is, Vladimir Putin was a subject of an arrest warrant from the International Criminal Criminal Court due to the unlawful deportation of children. Yeah. So. In short, it's being alleged that the Russian army has been taking children from orphanages and children's care homes in Ukraine and then putting them up for adoption in Russia. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, like, the... <laughs> it's so terrible. Well, yeah, it's... It made me think of Indiana Jones and uh, the Temple of Doom. Okay. They're stealing children to do child labor. Oh, yeah, <laughs> in okay. this place. Yep. And he's like, they took their children. <laughs> That's what I thought when I was reading this. But uh, anyway, the, the other side of the, the pro Putin people have been saying that, like, it's an act of war zone, right? Yeah. They're evacuating the children so the children aren't, you know, at risk in the war zone. Yeah. So. Uh, so I don't really know what to make of the situation, right? I don't know because like both sides seem plausible to me. It seems plausible yeah. that the Russians are, if uh, you know, abducting children, and then yeah, it also seems plausible that they don't have any quarrel with children. They have a quarrel with the, the Ukrainian army, yeah. so they evacuated children because they don't want children to be hurt. So yeah, <laughs> and once it. I was going to say once again. I know. Yes, you are. yes, yes, yes. Similar to the CCP, right? Yes. For whatever reason, people assume Russia is a left-wing country. However, no, because uh, of the Soviet Union, right? Yeah. But the yes. Soviet Union dissolved before I was even born. Yeah. Right. For example, South Africa used to be an apartheid state. Yes. Is it currently an apartheid state? Well, some may argue. Okay. I'd argue that. The shadow of apartheid looms large, and there's still, uh, you know, problems from that system that uh, live on to this day. But Definitely. but we don't live under apartheid currently, right? No, we do not. Because as of the passage of time, things changed, right? Yeah. So <laughs> the Soviet Union fell in was it eighty nine or ninety? Eighty nine. Eighty nine, right? That's been years <laughs> and years. <laughs> and uh, I think in two thousand, that's when Putin came into power. Yeah. So he is a right winger, <laughs> right? He's constantly talking about like, uh, you know, like Donald Trump says, "Make America great again." Yeah. Tr- Putin has something similar where he's like, "We've got to return to, uh, we've got to return Good Russia to, yeah, something like that, right?" Yeah. But he's not talking about the Soviet Union. He's talking about the pre-revolution, back, <laughs> yeah. back in the day. Yes, the the Russian. Uh, what's it, the kingdom of Russia? Not yeah. Uh, not that, that. That's what he is referring to, right? Yeah. So yeah, 
it's it's not because like Russia is a left wing country <laughs> that's why I'm giving you know bail to Putin I'm just I just don't know how to what to make of the situation yeah right but uh obviously you know Putin is a bad guy so it's it's much easier to believe that they're yeah. stealing children definitely so yeah. that's why I'm like I'm leaning towards that side but it also seems plausible that they evacuate the children because they don't want to kill yeah children but yeah like I said no idea who who's lying maybe everyone's lying yeah <laughs> there were no children to begin with <laughs> <laughs> they just stole like some cardboard cutout <laughs> that they put up, you know, like in pamphlets. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, following on from these past two two stories, Xi Jinping, do you know yes. that is the prime minister of China, is meeting Putin next next week for peace talks about yeah. the U- Ukraine situation. So, <laughs> you know, following on from the two stories, one China. sorting out world affairs yeah uh, pursuing for peace yeah the second thing is uh you know putin but yeah i don't really have anything to say about this i would say just have to wait just like the trump thing we have to see how it plays out yeah it's uh it's not like these other two stories where something's already happened yeah it's like uh they're meeting right. later this week we'll see what happens we'll maybe check in next week see yeah It's it's more developing story yes, than yes, something yes. that's already I just out. yeah, I just thought I'd bring it up because in relation to those other two it like kind of it fits in. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it's there's a through line here. Yeah. Right. And then finally yesterday there was a national protest against our president in South Africa. Yes. You know, asking for his removal and just protesting the current state of South Africa. And it was yeah. led by the EFF uh the F if you will. Yeah, the left-wing party of South Africa. I would usually say quote unquote but they do espouse left-wing values like not yeah. uh not some bullshit, right? Yeah, they It's are. just uh I don't find them trustworthy. Yeah. Do you know what a cult of personality is? Uh kind of. <laughs> I know what a it's, cult is. All right, it's when like you know you have a leader that whatever they say. Oh yeah, they go, just uh, okay. like You're not following principles, you're following whatever the leader says. Yeah. And the leader, you know, a person is uh how fallible. Yes. But the idea is not fallible, right? So if you're following the person, you could do uh, the wrong thing. Yeah. But if you're following the uh, idea yeah. and if yeah. somebody falls short of that, you push them to the side, you know. Yeah. You won't try it. So they very following of their leader. <laughs> yes, that is true. <laughs> right? That that's that's why that they are. That's my critique of them. So I'm not going to say they quote unquote the left-wing party like, you know, yeah. They are not centrist, they are not right-wingers, they are genuinely left-wing. It's yes. just uh I don't approve of their methods. Yeah. Right. The well, I approve of some of their methods. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, right. Uh I'm neither condoning nor condemning these protests. Yeah. Right. And okay. so like a lot of people said that like the protest failed. Yes. That like not enough people came out. Yeah. Uh you know, uh they using so there were there were protests in 2021. Yes. They using yeah. the scale of those crowds to measure the the, the scale of the crowds yesterday. Yeah. And they're saying it's a much smaller turnout. That's what the Okay. Yeah. The the narrative is. Makes right. Sense. But I'd like to point out that I thought it was effective. Right? Okay. From Sunday, yesterday and today we haven't had low chatting at all. Yeah, that is true. Right? We haven't. Uh There's uh, another thing like people will say well the the army and like the police were all deployed. So yeah. this this proves that they could be deployed all the time to be keep you safe but they're not. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's that's bad. Right. So even though like not not a lot of people came out the point was proven that you know the ANC can do stuff to make things better it's just that they they choose it, not to it's only when there's a threat of violence or implied violence that they they'll actually do anything to yeah uh, to kind of ease tensions yeah. right so in that sense i thought they were very effective yeah the protests but once again i'm neither condemning nor condoning it i Yeah. Don't wanna uh put forward an opinion other than to say I think it was effective. 
That right. is, yeah, that's reasonable. So that's it for our news. Do you have anything else you want to add? Uh, just, just the one thing for the Liverpool supporters sitting next to me. <laughs> um, knocked out of the Champions League mm. last week. 6-2. Yeah. On aggregate. 6-2 on aggregate. It's a bloody shambles, mate. But it is what it is. Listen. It happens. Okay, I know I came here and said last week <laughs> <laughs> that we were going to bang Madrid 4-0, but I don't really believe that. <laughs> right? It, uh, no, let, let me take that back. I did believe. Okay. But I thought we'd need a lot of luck. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. We didn't even show up. Yeah. Even if we had luck, we you deserve to lose, right? Yeah. The the perfor- like Madrid showed more urgency than <laughs> us. And they were five two up, right? They were the ones that wanted to win. Listen, and a lot of the time I defend Trent. Yes, Trent is not my favorite player. Just, he just happens to be the person I talk about most because yeah, he's the one that gets attacked the most. So I have to defend him the most. Right, you go to war for Trent. Yes, because like. Both Walker and Reese James, right? Anytime they make a, mi- <laughs> anytime they make a mistake, it just goes by. Yes. Anytime Trent makes a small mistake, like say a player gets past him, yeah, and then the player runs into the <laughs> the the past the line, right, and they go out of play. Yeah, they'll still you know criticize Trent and say, oh, he got away from him. Yeah, but stuff like that, right? Yeah, but genuinely, this uh, this match yeah. week that passed so shocking, bro. Yeah. It's you didn't put in any effort. Even going forward, like a lot of his passes just went wild. It was yeah. very wayward. Yes, it yeah. was just such a poor performance, bro. I yeah. If uh, I should have put a proviso last week, <laughs> I said if we show up and we have luck, <laughs> we would have won four no, But genuinely, so poor, bro. We deserve to lose. So basically, if everything went right, you would have won. Yes. But unfortunately, everything did not go right. In fact, we lost one. <laughs> <laughs> everything went wrong. <laughs> yes. But like that first that first leg, I thought we were really unlucky. Yeah. It was like a 2-2 draw. Yeah. But like Madrid got extremely lucky. So yeah. I was like, it's not going to be one-sided. But yeah. yeah, just totally the lack of effort from everyone, bro. It's so shocking. Yeah. <sighs> All right. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> oh, 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 you're glad you got that out of your system, you I, piece of shit. Yeah, I was sitting on that for a while. <clears throat> anyway, into the context for this Ant- movie, Ant Man, right? This is a sequel to original recipe Ant Man, obviously, and Ant Man and the Wasp. Yeah. But it's also somewhat a sequel to the Loki TV show. Yes. Have you seen it? No. All right. <laughs> uh, let me give you a quick rundown just so you have some context this is the context section after all (laughs) (laughs) this is the context section that's how that works so do you know in Endgame yes there's a Loki who escapes using the time stone yeah right because like the Hulk distracted everyone or something and he like touches the and he goes away right yeah and that's where this Loki TV show starts up okay it's following this variant yeah uh from 2012 when you know he loses uh, against the Avengers and he's being yeah taken away that's and he touches the time zone and he goes somewhere else right yeah so we find out there's an organization called the Time Variance Authority or the TVA okay so they prune like various timelines right so when there's a anomaly mm-hmm. an anomaly is if somebody uses uh, one of the infinity stones in a way that's not supposed to happen. I see. Okay, yes. Right. So, for example, Loki wasn't supposed to get away. He was supposed to... Be captured. Be captured. Go there. go back to Asgard. Yeah. Uh, for Thor 2, I want to say. Uh, yeah, I think so. Right. He's in captivity in Thor 2. Yeah. Right. But, uh, so they come to prune him and okay. they capture him. Right. And they take him to the TVA headquarters, right? And okay. he meets a guy named Mobius. Oh, Mobius okay. is a TVA operator, right? Uh, an agent, right? Yeah. Uh, and they. <clears throat> so, l- l- like I said, when I said an Infinity Stone does something that's quote unquote not supposed to happen, what do, yeah. what does that mean? Not supposed to happen. Uh, maybe they have like I'm assuming it's like they've got kind of like 
timeline laws and then if well this is the thing it's not like sub you know set law of the universe okay the tva is choosing what to prune and what to not prune so it's it's to their standards not like okay some universal law that they're following yeah right and the reason they're doing that is they're maintaining something called the sacred timeline okay which is not one timeline it's like a collection of timelines uh that that lead to like a very similar result oh okay right okay yeah so uh this is the spoiler section for lo- the loki tv show <laughs> okay <laughs> right we find out that the person in charge of the tv is someone called he who remains okay he who remains is a variant of kang oh all right, right? okay yeah and he explains that there was a multiversal war between different versions of him okay until he the he who remains <laughs> created the TVA and pruned all the timelines that led to the other kings okay and the the sacred timeline is what leads to him and you know other oh. variants like him right okay right yeah. so at the end of loki they kill he who remains okay and this undoes the the sacred the sacred timeline right yeah. so all the timelines uh, like splinter off yes this is what allows uh multiversal travel in home, no way home right okay and in uh the doctor strange movie when wanda goes to the different universe yeah okay. prior to that we'd never seen uh multiversal travel yeah right it's yeah. only when he who remains died and the tva became unraveled that, that you, multiversal died. travel became a possibility okay yeah right so uh <clears throat> yeah uh the last thing uh, so that that's all you really need to know going into Ant-Man. Ant-Man but just as a meta point this movie yeah it's a re- like a loose retelling of the Wizard of Oz Oh I never even thought of that but yeah Quantum Mania I also saw a lot of people like uh, well I just saw one guy compare it to Tron Do you know Tron I uh, I know of Tron Tron was a movie in like the 80s Yeah at for the time groundbreaking special effects but if you watch it now it just looks like total shit <laughs> right <laughs> okay. but in yeah. 2011 they made a movie called Tron Legacy R- Tron Legacy yeah. yes and that's also a retelling of the wizard of oz <laughs> right okay. so a yeah. lot of people are comparing ant-man to <laughs> tron <laughs> legacy and i'm like bro <laughs> 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 yeah but anyway that that's just to point out to the avatar haters who called it unoriginal <laughs> you know it's boring from other plots <laughs> Okay. Just letting them know that, you know, the majority of movies <laughs> take inspiration from, you know, other plots. Okay. So just letting you know, letting them know, the haters. Makes sense. There's they have hate in their heart. What can I? Um <laughs> I'm sorry that they have hate in their all right, heart. All right, all right. So we get to the opening scene. Yes. All right. The scene opens. So like we were saying last week, these Marvel movies are shot at a sound stage called the volume. Yes. Right. The opening scene ex- exemplifies what's wrong with the special effects. Okay. The backgrounds of the shot look static at like paintings instead of like a moving world. You know when Janet is like walking. Yeah. Right and we see Kang's ship. Yeah. Like crashing. The background it doesn't you know like the night sky you'll see like uh like twinkling twinkling or, and stuff like yeah. there's movement. Yeah. It just feels like a static painting. Honestly, in my notes at first I said the scale of this cave mm. is insane. because i didn't realize that it it wasn't a cave and mm. you know a cave would be quite static but this this just looked like a cave if that makes sense hmm no okay but <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'm sure you'll explain further as we go along yeah right? uh then we cut back to scott and he recaps the situation yeah you know to let us know where we are in the universe he just kind of mentions some stuff from end game yeah right just to catch us up yeah we find out cassie is a college sjw <laughs> <laughs> and she has no respect for the gosh darn law <laughs> our boys in blue she's disrespecting her boys in blue <laughs> she shrunk his cup <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Uh, but it, the the inciting incident is when Cassie sends out a signal into the quantum realm and they are brought in by Modok. Yeah. So I just thought this was very silly. 
the extended plot of Janet having some like deep dark secret holds no narrative weight as we know that she's a good character and the Ant family will forgive any like perceived evil actions. Yeah. So you either make Janet's crimes genuinely unforgivable. Yeah. Or change it to like a better inciting incident. Like maybe they were fight like the Ant family is fighting some other villain. Okay. And you know yeah. like how Janet uh, initially got sucked into the quantum realm like she just had to get too small and she uh yeah. you know went there yeah maybe something like that happens to Cassie yeah she like just takes it too far and gets uh, trapped in the quantum realm and they yeah. have to go in and save her it it would actually be set up perfectly because at the beginning she's learning how to use the suit still yes it it would have made a lot of sense to do it that way but yeah this this reasoning of Janet uh, you know reluctantly reluctantly not wanting to go to the the quantum realm and stuff is so dumb yeah really very silly it it also like okay no it's fine we'll get to that later all right and then uh, so the third option okay. <laughs> would be if jenna genuinely did want to go back and help the war effort yeah she's like oh yeah and a good way you could still re- use this plot is say she left and yeah. when she came back it's been like 60 years or something. Yeah. And this guy in that time has uh he's created his empire. Yeah, something like maybe not 60 years, maybe like 10 years or something. Right? Yeah. Uh Yeah, an amount of time in which things can change drastically. Yes, yeah, so it's not like her fault because it wasn't her fault anyway in the Yeah. like we will get to the they reveal it later like what she quote and go did. Yeah. Right? And it's not as it's not bad. Like I said, there's no way they would make her uh yeah. like do something genuinely bad that makes the rest of the end family hate her. Yeah. But so that's why this whole like I don't want to say plot. What's the the hook of the movie yeah, right the crux the crux of this movie is just stupid <laughs> right that's why <laughs> yeah. uh, just um, so anyway then we get into the quantum realm yeah right and janet says we'll talk about this later right and then they just proceed to walk around yeah. the quantum just, realm and just, just chat talk. about like just other random stuff you know there's plenty of time yeah. because like so you're fighting like a a conqueror right yeah uh, you they should know the stakes of the situation they they i mean Janet kind of does she like no but i mean she needs to tell them yeah that's that's another one of the things i noted down where it's like it takes too long to get to what they're actually doing because a lot of the time it's just like oh they're looking for us oh uh, we're not meant to be here mm. but it's it's not actually telling us why they're not meant to be there yes it's just it's an unnecessary mystery yeah. you know we <laughs> why on earth bro there's no need for this <laughs> right um uh i like the seven holes joke <laughs> <laughs> uh, but before that there's this like very sloppy editing sequence right okay yeah. where they they taking scott they like drink the ooze drink yeah. the ooze then it cuts away to like janet and she's meeting yeah those other people and she like sort of play fights with that guy yeah. and stabs him <laughs> and then he like <laughs> he, he brings it out yeah uh, another silly scene but you know not a big deal yeah uh it's not as big a deal of like the motivation yeah <laughs> right uh but yeah then they cut back to scott and it's the exact same yeah he's still drinking the ooze right yeah a cut is for like if you want to show a time skip yeah so if you like Oh, I need to go to the shop. Yeah. And get these ingredients. Either you could cut to the next scene being in the shop or the next scene you're still in like your house but you have all yeah. the right? Yeah. That that's what a cut is for. Either that or like it's switching in between two scenes that are like paralleling each other. Yeah. Uh, uh I I think about have you seen the Godfather? Uh no. <sighs> all I right. know. I'm in sorry. The, all right, in the final scene of the Godfather, we watched like Michael uh it's the baptism of his nephew okay. he's literally becoming a godfather ah right ah. while uh he's sending assassins to go kill his enemies okay and he's literally becoming i mean well he already literally was but he's figuratively yeah. becoming the godfather as the head of the yeah the mafia family 
as he's killing all his enemies and they're switching between him at the baptism and, and the assassin killing one of his enemies okay right so it's it's showing two situations that are paralleling each other that's what cuts are for yeah. right scott cutting away showing something then cutting back and he's doing the same thing is just a very sloppy editing yeah they could have just like drank the ooze the scene ends yeah but i was i was thinking it's like a it's a juxtaposition right because they so janet is like she's very in control she fights the guy cuts off his arm and then she gets a ride right but scott's kind of he's more panicky uh he's kind of worried about cassie and so it it kind of juxtaposes the the two even though you could just show it with like you could show the whole scene cut show the whole other scene yeah that would still juxtapose it yeah. but uh yeah i understand what you're saying i just don't think so yeah. i think it was just poorly done yeah probably right <laughs> uh mm, it's a minor nitpick right but mm. i don't really understand the rules of this world okay like how many people are visitors uh that's a very good question because somebody says something that kind of imp- implies they they're like they're from the sky just like him yeah so the, the implication i thought was kang the ant family and modok are the only non native people to the quantum realm yes so why do they have this juice that makes you understand <laughs> i mean this ooze that makes you understand their language um in in my mind it's just cuz it's a convenient way to get them to speak the alien language sure but they could use technology yeah of course <laughs> like they bit to space and stuff right yeah uh, maybe one of the guardians gave scott a uh, universal translator or something like that yeah. you know there's there's like a lot of different ways they could uh, but that like the yeah how would they know to give him the ooze um because i think i think the ooze is just something you drink right yeah because people were like it was being served at the bar yes when hank and uh, janet and them and hope uh, yeah go there right yeah so i assume i assume the ooze is just to drink for everyone but yeah. how do they find out that a human drinking the ooze would um that that's what i'm saying maybe janet yeah probably i mean uh, it, it it would then go back to who was the first human that they interacted with that's what i'm saying the implication is that it's only the ant family kang and modok yeah that are visitors yes so janet would have been the first one yeah so then i guess maybe it's like a a welcoming ritual or something to and then the then she realized oh yeah okay fair enough uh Yeah, that's mm. the best I've got for that. Role. Yeah, but the, uh, that makes sense. Uh Yeah. I really like the joke. Is that building alive <laughs> and the jelly man says, "Your buildings are dead." Oh, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> uh, great joke. Uh, can't believe you just called Web the jelly man. Web. Web. What is he? Is he not a jelly man? He is a jelly man, oh. but he also has a name. Mm. Mm. It's like when I called James Cameron's wife James Cameron's wife. All right. Then we get to Krylo. Krylo. Yes. I really like the music uh you know that plays when when he shows up. Yeah. But uh played by uh Bill Murray, notorious piece of shit. Oh. Like uh just everyone who's worked with him has like nasty things to say about him. He's just okay. not a nice person. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh in the scene like just before Kyla appears right yeah Janet Hank and Hope they they like chatting and uh Janet says something like you know like some call me a freedom fighter or a terrorist depending on who you ask yeah right and this goes back to like uh, our news of the week right yeah S- certain people will label the EFF protests as terrorism yeah. and other people will view it as you know fighting against the corrupt government yeah right so makes sense to me it's 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 stuff like that you know yeah. uh it's parallel paralleling real world yeah you know fighting against oppression yeah mm. but anyway uh once again what are the rules of this world right why does bill marry and like a few of them look human yeah that 
I... I don't know. Big, and what would the frame of reference be? You know? What? Because, like I said, Janet is the first person... Yes. ...to enter the quantum realm. Yes. We're assuming. Yes. So, their only uh, frame of reference for a human is a woman. Yeah. So, how would he design a... How would he be a man? Yes. Ah... Uh. And a lot of people have said this. It, this is like a this Ant Man movie felt like a, a Star Wars movie. Yeah, you know, like the Mos Eisley Cantina, where there's just like a bunch of different people in different costumes yeah. and stuff. This yeah. whole movie felt like you know, yeah, that kind of stuff. But like I said, oh, Wizard of Oz, you know, yeah, that's also similar. Yeah, it's a very so yeah. People are yeah. using very modern uh like references which they themselves are referencing yeah <laughs> the wizard of oz <laughs> mm. everything goes back to the wizard of oz in the end uh, yeah <laughs> uh, yeah so yeah i i just don't know yeah I, it's again it's just weird the only thing i could maybe suggest is that when they first met when Janet and Krylar first met they uh, she described and this is implying that he turned it to that yeah yes. no, yeah but what if he was just like that why do they look like humans I don't know if he was just, like I yeah, don't so know that was just was. my you know putting forward a theory that he used Janet's uh, you know impression of a man to yeah. like but what if he was just like that I then I don't know because there there would be no reason for him to look like that. That's what I'm saying. If like the native people should all be like one race, um, hmm. not necessarily. Because it, it it just seems like why did how did these various races all evolve in this place? Uh, That's what I'm saying. It's very odd. It could just be like bacteria. You know how, like, you get different types of bacteria. All right, fair enough. Um, it's like we've got animals on Earth, right? Yeah, we yeah, yeah, sure, sure. But then <sighs> animals became sentient too. And that's why we have, hmm. well, that's why they have, like, multiple hmm. sentient species. Anyway, they make the escape. Yeah. And uh, they, they say this. They say this line from Indiana Jones that are really, really like, where they're like, uh, so I'm just going to say the line from in Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, because I can't remember the line from this movie, <laughs> but I can't remember <laughs> the Indiana Jones one, right? Um, he says, uh, uh, I had a few love interests here and there, and Marion says, uh, what went wrong? And he says, they all had the same problem. They weren't you. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Hank says something very similar to yeah. Janet, but yeah, not as well done as Indiana Jones. I no, don't think definitely not. <sighs> it it seemed like that, and again, uh, sorry, we keep coming. This like uh, escape scene. Yeah, it just feels like they're standing in a room. Yeah, and the background doesn't look good. There's certain like places and certain sequences that just look like pure shit. Yeah, it's. It's, and this is why I wanted to do this movie after Avatar. Because <laughs> <laughs> juxtaposition. Yes, the juxtaposition between this where, like, so poorly done, so poorly thought out, you know, yeah. not implemented well at all, versus Avatar, which is just perfect. Yeah. Right? The, the, and I'm pretty sure I said it last week, these Disney crooks are finished. <laughs> That's what I thought, right? Everyone would see Avatar and they'd be like, we're finished with this. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> we don't want this shit anymore, right? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, the next thing is Modoc hunting Scott and Cassie. Yeah. Uh, Mod. So, Modoc. You know, we're talking about effects looking like shit. Yeah. Modoc looks like shit, especially. Oh. I didn't like it at all. That poor right. guy. It's right. not his fault. He has a big head. <laughs> <laughs> and I understand like in the comics Modoc is used for comedic relief uh, usually right so yeah. he's used as he would be yeah. in the comics it's just I feel like they really 
underutilized him. Yeah. Like, they wasted him. Yeah, they did. Because, like, he could have survived this movie and, like, yeah. showed up down the line or something. Uh, he could have had hmm. a little Vegeta arc going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh have you seen Shark Boy and Nova Girl? Yes. Right. <laughs> a lot of people have been posting online like George Lopez's character from <laughs> Shark Boy and Nova Girl versus Modok, and like this movie from the early 2000s looks better than <laughs> than this. Awful, bro. Awful. Uh, <sighs> now we get to Kang. Kang. Right. An like, hour into the movie. Hmm. Like I said earlier, well, he, we met him in the first scene. Yeah, but then, like, actually introduced to him because, like, he just he shoots that thing in the first scene. Yeah, yeah. That's... Well, but I mean, he's the the titular wizard of Oz, right? <laughs> you don't immediately meet him when you get to Oz. You have to go on the road, right, and eventually get to him. Okay. Yeah, I see. But then, what wishes is he granted to go back? But he's he's not granting their wish. He's no, but the see, it's just a loose retelling, right? Because at the end, the wizard is a fraud. Yes. In this, Kang is not a fraud. Okay. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's using the structure, but it's not a okay so direct it's, it's adaptation. It's not actually the Wizard of Oz. It's just religion. Yeah. Okay. Got you. Just the setting and the structure, but not yeah. the every single element. Okay. Hmm makes sense right cool so like I said earlier they were never gonna make Janet do something unforgivable yeah and then now that we find out what it is it's even lamer yeah she worked in good faith with this guy when when she found out that he was evil she fights against him yeah she literally did nothing wrong yeah right uh so like <laughs> that's why I'm like this this it's a false mystery there's no like actual tension yeah because we know there's there's no way she's ever gonna be a genuinely bad person. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. This could have been rewritten. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like, I spent, like, a few seconds thinking about it. <laughs> and, and, like, I found a way around this, right? Yeah. It was just... So... Again, I keep saying silly, but it's so stupid, bro. <laughs> truly. Truly. Yeah. And I kind of like this movie. So... <laughs> <laughs> I gave it like a six, which is not bad. Yeah. It's fine. It's it's yeah. alright. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, Kang. It's I feel like it's one of those movies that you watch for enjoyment and not for analysis. I guess, yeah. It, it's just one of those like like the crappy rom coms that I watch. Well, any movie can have a, me- a me- meaning. Yeah. It's just usually okay, never mind, we'll get to it later. I watch Avatar for pleasure. That is true. And it can also be analyzed. Yeah. Hmm. But not all movies can. All right, whatever. Oh, uh, I disagree. That's the point of this podcast. That, <laughs> <laughs> that all movies yeah, can be analyzed. That, uh, whether or not the director knows it, they're putting a message in their movie. Okay. Right. Interesting. Yes. Uh, like I said, any, anything that like they say or do yeah. can be interpreted in any way, right? Okay, I see. So even uh, if they have like a a worldview they're working from, yeah, that's gonna come out in their art. So whether yes. they're intending it or not, they are every you know thing that they do tells you something about them. Okay. So I believe every movie has something to say. It tells you something about the person who created it. Okay. But uh, not everyone is good. <laughs> not, they're not all good at yes. telling their story. Well, or, or just a good movie. <laughs> Full stop, right? Okay, yeah. Mm, yeah. Mm. He says, uh, I don't like the li- uh, Initially, I didn't like the line where he's like, You want Avenger? Have I killed you before? <laughs> right? And he's like, You're not the one with the hammer, are you? <laughs> like those things. I just found it like. Once again, very silly. Because the que- <laughs> the questions are self-answering. If he's killed him, how would he know? You know? Uh, Either he was the person who died or yeah. he wasn't there so he wouldn't know. Yeah. So uh, there's that one. And he obviously doesn't have a hammer with him. So he's not the one with that. <laughs> right? But uh, a little bit later, 
he calls him Ant Man, without anybody ha- t- telling Kang his yeah. name is Ant Man. So uh, yeah, in hindsight, I'm like, oh, maybe he's just fucking with him. Yeah. <laughs> he's just <laughs> <laughs> he's just saying stuff to like scare him, right? Yeah, I think he is because yes, uh, he calls him Ant Man, and then like later on, he says, "You talk to ants." Yeah. And he's, we've never seen him interact with Ants at that point. That's yeah. why. That's why I'm pretty sure Kang knows who he is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there was something I was gonna say on that, but I don't remember now. That's fine. Okay, so I watched this movie two times. Once when it came out, and yeah. in this past week to write this, you yeah. know, I just took some notes uh, as I was writing. So on the first watch, I just felt like that heist scene was very contrived okay because they the previous Ant-Man movies are about heists yeah so they needed to find a way to tie in a heist and yeah. I just thought it was very like I said contrived silly yeah uh, but yeah on rewatch Jared explains that it's because Scott has pump particles that's why yes. he can make the the core smaller yeah so it can be used again yeah right but I'm still, I'm still kind of, uh, think it's, it's silly, right? Because Kang, he's a super genius from the future. Yes. He, he should be able to figure yeah. out Pym particles, which hang Pym in, I think it's implied he created in like the fifties. Yeah. Maybe later. I, I but I Janet disappeared 30 years ago. Yes. Which is the nineties. The nineties. current day. So at least in the 90s, he had pump particles. Yes. So this guy from the future can't figure it out. Yeah, it does seem it's, a bit... Uh, it's a bit weird. So that's why on first viewing, I was like, they just had to find a way to get Scott, you know. Yeah. And his... Uh, I was going to say tools. His skills are, <laughs> are doing a heist, right? So yeah. that's why this heist seems contrived. But even thinking about it, I'm like, Kang should figure a way out out of this like a lot of these things make Kang seem like lame yeah uh well we'll we'll get to it just now but this for example like uh him not being able to fix the ship yeah Janet having to be the one that like uh that that, sorts out his well yeah that does a lot of stuff to yeah to uh work out the the power core yeah it's just he it makes him seem lame like yeah what does he do yeah right. but also they somewhere towards like the middle of the movie they're like he has technology that we haven't even thought of yet yes <sighs> and it's like wh- how can he not just create this thing that he needs mm. Mm. yeah uh, and uh, you know the thing that like Scott he had one singular goal of saving Cassie yeah that's why all the the Ant-Men work together. Yeah. Wouldn't Kang, if he gets there, there's different where he splits up, right? Yeah. All of them want to leave the quantum realm. So they would have one singular goal. So they would do yes, the same thing. It's, yeah. it's, it's just, once again, that whole scene <laughs> is just so stupid, <laughs> as with the, the majority <laughs> of this movie. Just... Ugh. But maybe it's because the Ant-Men think like ants. So they know to climb on top of each other. Mm. It's a very weak excuse, but it's an excuse. Mm. So this guy's never seen ants before. He's never seen no. things climb on top of each other. <laughs> like Unreal. <laughs> like Krylar says, ants, what are those? Do we have them down here? Mm. <laughs> but in the So Kang is the new Thanos, right? Yes. And... Uh, so like I mentioned in the context section... Uh, in Loki, yeah, he dies. Yes. In this movie, he's defeated. It's unclear whether he dies or not. Yes. Uh, and like I said, he couldn't uh, create this technology that existed hundreds of years before <laughs> he he was born. Yeah. Even though he's a future super genius. Yeah. All of this stuff just makes him seem lame. Yeah. He's supposed to be, <laughs> you know, the big bad for the next. Uh, phase of movies yeah and the way they've set him up is very lame yeah I would have preferred that they just didn't do it in an Ant-Man movie 
Yeah. They could have done it in like either in an Avengers movie or Definitely. perhaps like a Fantastic Four movie. Oh, yeah, actually. Right? Yeah. Because uh Kang is actually a Fantastic Four villain. Yeah. And then he like kind of became an Avengers villain later on, but he yeah. was initially a Yeah. So we we were actually speaking about this before we started recording, right? But we were. Nathaniel Richards, Kang the Conqueror is a descendant of Reed Richards, the, the lead of the Fantastic Four. Yeah. Right. And Reed is like the smartest person in the Marvel universe, uh, uh at least in the comics. Uh, yeah. We haven't seen him in the main universe in the movies, right? Yeah. We've seen John Krasinski in uh, a different universe. Yeah. And Yoan Grafford in the 2000s Fantastic Four movies. Yeah. But we haven't seen one in the MCU. Yeah. Right. So I think it would have been cool to introduce him in a Fantastic Four movie. Yeah, mm. would have. Or like like probably the best would be an Avengers movie because he is the he's going to be the Avengers villain. Yes. So in the same way Thanos was introduced in uh, the end of the Avengers. What? The end of the Avengers. Oh yeah, okay. in the post credit scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like the uh, Avengers. Yes, the, the first Avengers. Yeah, the post credit scene. Uh, of the his Avengers. little mate, I can't remember the mate's name, but he says something like, "To court the, uh, to go against the Avengers would be to court death." Yeah. And Thanos is like, "Yes." So he just, uh, he, I don't think he says anything. I think he just turns around and smiles. Yeah. So like stuff like that, where you're just teasing it. Yeah. And in the Avengers movie, because he's going to be a Avengers villain down the line. Yeah. Similarly. I think we're just talking in circles now. Definitely. About yeah. <laughs> uh the last thing I want to say oh uh not the last thing. Yeah. But I think it would have been cool if he were like the advisor. Uh like there there was a established hierarchy in the in the quantum realm. Yes. And he came in like off the street and yeah. he's worked his way up into being like the advisor to the king. Okay. And then like he loses i mean not loses but do you know what a xanatos gambit is no do you know the tv show gargoyles children's program gargoyles i think i heard of it well the villain's name is xanatos ah right so xanatos he always sets up a situation where if he wins or he loses he still wins oh right, right okay so yeah. if he loses he's put himself in a situation where he can get a bigger win yeah Uh example of this would be Loki in the first Avengers movie. Yeah. So Loki's plan is he needs to get back to Asgard. Yeah. So he loses the battle against Avengers, but he gets taken to Asgard as punishment, which is what That's he was right. trying to do, right? Yeah. So that was his end of Gambit. If right. and I'm not saying they have to reuse stuff from before, right? I don't want him to be When I'm saying he's the next Thanos, I don't want him to literally be the next Thanos. <laughs> I mean the Infinity Gauntlet. I mean snap. he needs to be given the same sort of uh like power, not like respect, you know, like uh Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, as Thanos, not Yeah. Not the the exact same uh just yeah, but uh, like I said, the the treatment. He needs yeah. to be more feared. He right. Needs- And like I said, these first two appearances, he's died. Yeah. Well, he, he I don't you know, sorry, I don't know if he died in this one. Well, it's kind of it's, implied. Yeah. But he could have survived. Yeah. But yeah. <sighs> he's just like he doesn't have the same oomph as Thanos. Yes. And he's supposed to be an even bigger yeah, villain. Yeah. But you you just don't see it. Yes. Uh anyway, the final thing I'll say is this. Um uh, Have you ever like been in right wing forums? Uh no. All right. Well, I when I was younger, I used to frequent right wing forums. Yes. Why are you saying yes to that? Because you've told me about this. All before. right, all right, all yes. right. Uh and from time to time I still have a look to see what they talk about, but just it's usually just like deranged racist stuff. <laughs> right? But yeah, okay. so they make fun of black people, right? Okay. Well, well <laughs> Uh so black people they there's something called a hotep. Okay. Do you know what that is? No. They're like uh so they say stuff like we used to be kings in Africa oh. before you know slavery took us away. Yeah. But okay. obviously that's very 
not everyone can be a king, right? There's one king of the of the people, yeah. Right, but anyway, so they they say stuff like we were kings, but because of their accent, it's a, it sounds like we were kings, uh. right? So the right wing makes fun of them <laughs> by calling them kings. Okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think the optics are looking good no. <laughs> because Kang <Nope. laughs> Kang is a black guy <laughs> in this movie and right. he's been defeated twice. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. but I but I'm just saying uh I'm sure they'll be making a lot of memes with uh, definitely something with Kang yeah. to make fun of black people. So, uh uh that's the last thing I want to say about Kang. Okay. Uh This paragraph at this point is my main sort of thesis okay of the movie okay it's called the commodification of descent okay so the idea is best illustrated in the black mirror episode have you seen black mirror no <sighs> once again uh, yeah all right so black mirror is a anthology series which means every episode takes place in its own universe yes right and the second episode of the first season is this one where they ride bikes for electricity Okay. And they have this talent show. Okay. So I'm not explaining it well. <laughs> Look, there's like an underclass of people, okay. right? Okay. Yes. And in the underclass, they all they do is they ride bicycles to create energy. Yes. And that in they like they get food like apples and stuff. Yeah. And then they have a room where they watch TV. Okay. So uh this guy he put like he puts a not a knife like a cut loss yeah to his throat right and he gets on this no he he is on the talent show right yes but no one's listening to him so he takes that loss pulls it up to his throat yeah right and he gives us impassioned speech about like criticizing the system okay then we see like there's is like a cut and the next week he has his own talk show where he holds the piece of glass to, <laughs> <laughs> to his throat and he and like he gives speeches okay right so they've taken his critique of their system and rolled it into their system oh. and started commodifying it right okay yeah uh a lot of people if like you read left wing scholars call like capitalism a living breathing you know uh machine yeah it adapts it you know it takes in critiques of itself and you know uh it commodifies it but it's out commodities yeah 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 so what it it takes in these ideas right yeah it sanitizes it and like defangs it from having you know the radical like take your radical idea defanging it and then presenting it back to you yeah, and com- is... and commodifying the dissent yeah right yeah okay. got you yeah. so uh we have a running commentary in the movie praising left wing ideas for example Cassie being against the cops yeah her convincing Scott to help the native people against an oppressive force yeah uh she says just because it's not happening to you doesn't mean it's not happening yeah uh Janet saying that she's a freedom fighter or terrorist we yeah mentioned that uh yeah. in the opening scene Scott says hope is doing these real superhero things like creating affordable housing yeah etc etc yeah Uh in the final act Hank says I know socialism is a charged word but I really think we can learn a lot from these <laughs> ants right yeah. he actually doesn't even say that uh hope cuts him off before he finishes his sentence but yeah. he was going to say ants he says these and then trails off yeah <laughs> right uh the movie was produced by the Disney Corporation <laughs> that <Right>? was <laughs> they are the oppressive <laughs> force that people are fighting against right <laughs> <laughs> uh and they're stone cold capitalists right the ideas being presented here are just hypocrisy yeah but disney knows that's what certain people in the audience wants to hear so it commodifies the sense of itself yeah right okay i'm not saying this is an explicit thing like uh maybe they told the writer you have the freedom to write whatever and that writer was like oh well uh you know i like these ideas let me put them in the movie yeah right so uh maybe the writer wasn't thinking of it consciously but you know like last week we were talking about the cultural appropriation yeah i don't think james cameron intended to do cultural appropriation yeah. but it doesn't matter if you intended to or not it's what happened right yeah. similarly i don't think the writer or the creator of this movie intended to commodify the scent but, but it's, it's what happened, happened. yeah <laughs> right right uh uh 
yeah so in, intention is ir- irrelevant when we're yeah talking about that right yep uh, modok modok yes <laughs> so dumb right <laughs> as much as kang was wasted modok was wasted much more uh Cassie his entire character changing when Cassie said don't be a dick <laughs> awful truly <laughs> truly awful right i wanted to walk out and request a <laughs> refund <laughs> from the theater when i saw this bro uh like he could be Kang's long-term sidekick yeah or like a a villain in his own right absolutely yeah killing him off was just like i think we already spoke about this but like it just a uh, a dumb move. Yeah. Now that being said, I laughed the lo- the hardest <laughs> at his death scene. Oh. <laughs> Throughout this that's the funniest joke in this whole movie. <laughs> When he's dying is like, "Scott, you are my brother." <laughs> he's like, "Um, yeah, I guess." <laughs> he's like, "And I died as an Avenger." <laughs> And he was like, yep, yep, what are the Avengers? Uh-huh. <laughs> so, yeah, I really did feel like the death was so stupid, but it made me... Because I saw a meme, right, that had, it said, Avenge the Fallen, and like the A was, and the a was on a picture of Mona. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, the next thing is the wasp. The wasp. So if you've noticed I've been calling this movie Ant-Man Quantumania. Yes. When really the name of the movie is Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Yes. This oh, is a yes. this is a silent protest against the lack of screen time for the wasp. Hope I, Van Dyne. I see. Okay. Mm. Mm. I was doing a protest this whole time, folks. Wow. Mm. But then certain people will call it brave. and those people are right <laughs> <laughs> i applaud those people <laughs> for seeing the truth of the situation right or you could argue that you know janet is also the wasp yeah and she the wasp in the title could be referring to her yeah it could in the same way hank hank pym is ant man yeah and scott is ant man yeah janet and hope are both the wasp yeah so i don't care <laughs> i really wish we had more hope Yeah. Uh, yeah, I really it sucks how she was shafted, bro. As a title, as a what do you a titular, titular character. character. Well, but should. that's what I'm saying. She she might not be the titular wasp. It might be Janet. But okay, yeah, Who Janet get, actually gets a lot she, more screen time. That's what I'm saying. She yeah. might be the titular wasp. Yeah. But she doesn't act as the wasp. Hmm. She doesn't do the whole she doesn't have a flying. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. But she's still the wasp. I mean, she's kind of like a a legacy wasp. Is Tony Stark Iron Man when he's out of the suit? No, I would say no. Oh, I would say he's just Tony Stark. I mean, billionaire genius Play, guy. Playboy yeah. philanthropist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But he's just Tony Stark. Yeah. Okay, well, I disagree. I think they still Okay. The hero. Maybe Tony Stark was a bad example. But yeah. <laughs> is Hank Pym still the <laughs> Ant-Man when he's out of his suit? But he's doing research with ants, so technically he counts as an ant. That's what man. I'm saying. Janet is the wasp. She's a wasp. She is has she... a very waspy personality. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what a uh, wasp is? Like the the little insect? No. White Anglo-Saxon protestant. Oh. Yeah, she fits that description. Well, I don't know if she's a Protestant. Hmm. But like uh uh up until Obama, yeah. All the presidents were wasps. <laughs> Or the recent president US presidents were wasps. Okay. All right. That's that's where I know that title from. Okay. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> uh Joe Brandon, he's a Catholic. Okay. Uh Trump is orange. <laughs> <laughs> He's a freaking Cheeto. <laughs> how can how can, you know, a chip from the Frito Corporation be the president? It just it doesn't make sense. <laughs> uh, oh, but yeah, but anyway, 
they totally shafted hope in this movie that that's the yeah. point i was trying to yes. make i i didn't like it cuz like she doesn't get like a lot of shine in the previous two yeah like she's a part of the team but like she's just kind of <laughs> she's there. just kind of there bro <laughs> uh, i really don't like how yeah she was shafted i get you so anyway uh the original ending was for both Scott and Hope to be trapped in the quantum realm oh. and Kang was going to escape okay and i feel that's a way better ending yeah right because one so well, yeah. you know we were saying like he seems lame yeah. like if he won <laughs> right <laughs> if he won he wouldn't be so lame if he won and he like killed Hank Pym that would have been a yeah you know like i said now we know he's a threat yeah he killed original recipe antman yeah and uh yes he uh, trapped antman and the wasp in the the quantum the realm. quantum realm you know he would just seem like a much more credible threat yeah now he just seems like uh, so uh, that this is the thing did he die because scott throws uh pump particles at him yeah and it's he, he seems to shrink yeah but they are at the smallest place you can be in the quantum realm So oh, where would he shrink? Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is yeah. there an even more quantum realm? <laughs> Is there a quantum realm? Yeah, a quantum realm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, either way he was defeated. Yes. That's why I'm like ugh, so lame. I, we keep going back to this. I need to stop saying <laughs> so lame. <laughs> so lame. It's so lame. But yeah, the uh, I really like that alternate ending better. Yeah. The way this ended <sighs> Also I I feel like they should have definitely killed off someone. Yeah. Yeah. Because that that's like, how I said Hank Pym. Yeah, like right. Modok does not count as mm. being killed off because Well, and he's a villain. Yeah, you need to kill like, a a good guy. Yeah. Yeah. You have to create some sort of threat. Like But like at the end is, of uh Infinity War when all half the people die. Yeah. That's the you need to have yes. something or like before that when he kills vision and yeah. he pulls the thing out of his uh yeah the brutality of yes, pulling the mind we need to out. understand that kang is a threat yeah right yeah the socialism ants <laughs> 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 i don't know what to say this is really like i already spoke about it in the commodification of dissent yeah. it's like i assume there's people who be like oh prish i thought you'd love this it's about uh, socialism ants <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh you, because i have seen like right wingers uh be like folks the sandman movie is communist propaganda <laughs> <laughs> because of the ads yes because of the ads <laughs> but like if if you look at the subjects of it and hank pym is a billionaire industrialist is uh pretty much has the same back story as tony stark yeah right so and hope she's a billionaire as well and you know all these Yeah. This project she's doing is like probably neoliberal bullshit. So like <laughs> I understand the words that they're saying, but the actions don't match their words. Yeah. So this is not communist propaganda. Sorry to break it <laughs> to you. <laughs> like I said, this is just the Disney Corporation. Uh they assume that this is what certain people in the audience wants to hear. Yeah. So they put it in so they can sell more tickets. That's the beginning of end of it. Yeah. Right. Uh, then we get to the end scene and I kind of like this the meltdown no yeah 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 but I mean like uh it's like a sign of things to come okay yeah yes right when cuz he he has to pay for his coffee yeah and then <laughs> when he takes a bite of the cake it tastes like shit yeah so like something is wrong yeah you know <laughs> like <laughs> it's not one thing precisely but there's just something wrong yeah cuz um, there's something rotten in the state of, <laughs> of Denmark <laughs> uh, right cuz originally at the beginning it's like perfect you know he walks down the street bright smile on his face he's waving at everyone he gets the free coffee everything's perfect mm. and then now at the end after he's gone to the quantum realm and come back everything's mm. falling apart in some way mm. but we don't know how yet mm. Mm. and that's relatively exciting so, yeah that's why i really like this ending scene yeah it's just the movie preceding it there's so many <laughs> <laughs> there's so many different ways it could have gone it's really written like it yeah 
Uh, well, I did like it. Yeah. And uh, I don't want this to be like a M. Night Shyamalan <laughs> third actress. But <laughs> I like Marvel movies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no. <laughs> oh, right? could you? The reason I critique them is because, uh, you know, I'd like them to get better. Yeah. Right. <laughs> if if I didn't uh, if I didn't if I wasn't interested, I just wouldn't watch them. I would just uh, do something else. Yep. Fair but, enough. Yeah. My cousins. Every time I'm complaining about a Marvel movie, my other cousins, not this cousin, he uh, <laughs> they uh, do they know you're my cousin? No. I don't think we've mentioned it. No, we have not. All right. But now they do. Yeah. Anyway, my other cousins <laughs> they they always say like, "Oh, you hate Marvel." When I'm uh, critiquing a Marvel movie, no, I love Marvel. <laughs> In fact, I'm a bigger Marvel fan than them. But <laughs> <laughs> that's beside the point, right? Um, so the first post-credit scene is the Council of Kings. Yeah. I just so you know what we were saying about the movie. Yeah. It just doesn't do anything for me. Yeah. Because. Uh, in the movie, Kang says they banished me. They were frightened of me. Yeah. So the most scary Kang was defeated by Ant Man. Yes. So I mean, <laughs> why should we be worried worried about the rest of them? You know, yeah. it's uh, like I said, like I've been saying, he dies at the end of Loki. Yeah. He possibly dies at the end of this one. He seems like a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> There's no reason to be threatened by this man, right? Yeah. It's. Yeah. Just oh, no heft. Uh, we never really mentioned, but I really liked Jonathan Major's performance. Okay. Both in uh, Loki and in this one. Okay. I really like him as yeah. an actor. I just okay. don't like the character. Yeah. I think we should. Yeah. Make that distinction. Yeah. I mean. That's I also that really one. like Paul Rudd. <laughs> yeah. I'm very uh, susceptible to that man's charm. <laughs> 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 uh, I just have a little chuckle whenever I see him. <laughs> Right. Um, the second post-credit scene is Owen Wilson and Loki uh, watching a Kang variant called Victor Timely. Yeah. Right. So this is what I was saying about following on from the Loki TV show. Yeah. He who remains dies. The timeline unravels, and Loki, when he gets back to the TVA, uh, Owen Wilson doesn't remember him. Yeah. So I assume Loki took him to show him a Kang variant. Yeah. Uh, that's all I can take from that scene yeah. and well his name is Victor Timely right yeah Timely is what Marvel Comics used to be called yeah they used to be called Timely then they changed I think Atlas okay and then became Marvel in like the 60s okay but yeah I think that was just a small nod to the original yeah Marvel. their past yeah but yeah that's all I have yeah okay well, your notes I mean... You I haven't said it. Like, you've just been, like, you know, once in a while looking at... Uh, yeah. You have uh, so many notes, you haven't said anything. Yeah, there's there's a lot of notes. All right, all right, go from the uh, beginning. Okay, uh, let's see. What... I, I'm trying to... Okay, let's see what we have that's, like, already... That hasn't been said already. Um, oh, you can just say whatever and then... I mean, there's... Okay, yeah. There's, there's a little thing where... Um, uh, what's his name? Quaze, I think, the mind reader. Yeah. Where he he tells Veb that uh, Scott has seven holes. Yeah, we. <laughs> but I think there's eight. Hmm. Hmm. What are those? The two nostrils, two ear holes, hmm. um, mouth. That's what five. Uh, belly button six, but seven. But then there's also a hole that you pee from. Mm. I counted that and I got seven. One, two, yeah. three, four, four five, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, sure. I, th- <laughs> I think I wasn't counting my belly button. Like, because the belly button doesn't go Yeah. anywhere. I, I would say that it, it counts as a whole. I don't know about that. Because I'm assuming, like, you know how Veb is... What's like, inside the belly button? The skin? I yeah, so there's no hole. But it... It just seems like a hole because the skin is... Yeah. ...pulled in there. But it's not a hole. It just seems like a hole. But it used to be part of your digestive tract. 
Right. And then when you're when yeah, they cut look, the But I'm saying put your finger in your belly button. Can okay. you feel the back? Yes. It's skin. Okay. Well, I don't know because So it only seems like a hole. So you don't have a belly button. You just have skin there. I, what? No, I have I have a belly button. Your finger's not going in. <laughs> there. Alright. And it's skin. Well, I don't know. So, so it's not a hole. Because the belly button like twists, right? I don't know if yours does that, but mine is like twisted. So it's like, you know, if you have like a, I don't know, what's a good example? If you have like a water bottle and you twist it, yeah, right, then it just kind of twists into a, a very small thing. But it's still skin. That's what I'm saying. Okay. It doesn't like your ear, it leads into your inside, right? Uh, does it? Inside your head. Well, it, it leads into, like, your nasal cavities and behind your eyes and your sinuses and stuff. Is that not inside your head? Well, I guess, yeah. Does your mouth lead inside your body? Yes. Your anus? Yeah. It's usually well, an exit. Yeah, it, it usually But you can enter. Out. Yeah, I guess you could. Your urethra? Yeah, okay. Urethra is an exit, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Okay. You can enter and exit through all these holes <laughs> except the belly button. That's why I wasn't counting okay. the belly button. Okay, I see. Yes, makes sense. Mm. But then, do you count eye sockets as holes? Hmm. But what? Co- the eyes don't come out. Water comes out, but eyes don't. Yeah, but you could scoop out an eyeball. But it's covered up. Here, th- we're saying it's a, ho- a hole, right? Okay, just if like you're, a hole. If you're missing eyes, then, yeah, we can count it. But uh, in the movie... Scott isn't missing an eye. Okay, yeah. Maybe if there was Nick Fury. (laughs) 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 Let's say seven or eight holes. (laughs) Scott's got seven, but Nick has eight. Yeah. (laughs) Well, no, his eye is still there. Yeah, it's still there. It's just been scratched. Yeah. Yeah, so it wouldn't work. No. Yeah. (laughs) That's okay, yeah. Mm. Um, There's also a lot of little things, like... um, uh, when the jet lands, you know when there's uh, when they're meeting Krylar at that party thing, and the jet lands and everything rumbles. Mm. I thought that was kind of cool. Mm. Like it's it's not a main point of. Like I said, the the music that plays when he lands, yeah. outstanding. Yeah, I just I I think that scene is quite nice. Mm. Also, when they um, they throw the little pum capsule thing at the alien sitting in the drink. And then it yes, big and it yes. kills them. <laughs> because, like, uh, Bill Barry was having the time <laughs> yeah, of his life yeah. chowing that fucking thing, bro. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. It is a comic, you know, yeah. response. <laughs> that, yeah, that is really good. Um, and then there's also... Where, where did Darren's body go? Because he's, like, he's a head, and he has arms, and he has legs... But where's the rest of his torso gone? So, you remember how he... So, he doesn't have real pum particles. Yeah. Do you, do you remember the first movie? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, the first movie is about him. He's like a... He was Hank Pym's protege, right? Yeah. I and Hank Pym leaves the company. So, he's trying to recreate pum particles. Yeah. So, he has a very fucked up version of pum particles. Okay. So, I assume when he became small... It fucked yeah. up his body and his head became big, but the body oh, is right, small. Okay. Yeah. So certain parts of him are big, like the head, certain parts are small, like the rest the, of him. Like the rest of him. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's why I, I assume that's why it worked. Because that's not the that's not the comic Modoc uh, origin story. Yeah. He's just some guy <laughs> uh, <laughs> that like aim he works for AIM. Yeah. I think he was a scientist at AIM. Okay. We saw AIM in Iron Man 3. Yeah. They were Killians. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he's an AIM thing. He has nothing to do with Darren Cross and the Quantum Realm. And, huh. But, uh, you know, like I was saying, because he had fucked up pump particles, it kind of makes sense why they made him MODOK. Yeah. But, yeah. Okay. That's fair. <coughs> Reasonable. Um, and then... There was another... All right. Yeah, so, you know, when Scott goes into the probability storm, Hmm. and he, like, he's fine until he gets to the, like, I guess the ground of it, and he, then he starts multiplying, why does he wait, well, not 
wait, but why is he given that time? But hope, as she's flying in, she's already multiplying. I don't know. I think maybe... Like he... So this is like a thing from Rick and Morty. Okay. Actually, the writer of this movie, his name is Jeff Loveness. Yeah. He's, a Rick, Adam, I he's a, Ricky, a Rick and Morty writer. He oh. was previously a Rick and Morty writer. And the guy who wrote the Loki TV show, okay. his name is Michael Waldron. Yeah. Also former Rick and Morty TV writer. Okay. So, yeah, Marvel have poached those guys. <laughs> 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 yeah, but anyway, in Rick and Morty, right, yeah. there's a, a... Similarly, like a probability storm. Yeah. There's characters, it's when they're uncertain, that's when... Okay. Uh, but if someone is certain, they don't uh, pop off into true okay. possibilities, right? Yeah. So, like, in the TV show Rick, he is very certain about something. So, yeah. he doesn't split. Oh. But his grandchildren, they have lots of wor- worries and are uncertain about things, and they just start multiplying. Okay. Yeah. Right? So, similarly, I would think maybe in the beginning, Scott was certain. Then, as soon as he started having doubts, that's when the... When they started the, multiplying. Yeah, he started multiplying and the copy started popping up. Okay. That could be it, or maybe he just wasn't close enough. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, there was one more thing. What was it? Oh, there's a really cool little thing where, um, you know, uh, Cassie becomes big in the final scene. Yeah. And, like, her and Scott hug, and then they shrink and at the same time, Hope runs in, and they're all the same size. Mm. I think it's just really cool how they did that. Mm. Mm. I don't remember that. Oh. But <laughs> oh. <laughs> now that you're you reminding me, right? The yeah. first time I watched it, yeah, I didn't realize that she was big. Yeah, right. Me, yeah, we we spoke about this. It. Yeah, I didn't like. I think I may have just like looked at my phone for a second, and then when I look back up, uh, yeah. Uh, she had uh, transformed right <laughs> but like because you don't really get scale in the uh, the quantum, the quantum realm. realm it's yeah. not like in on earth you're comparing it to like the buildings around you and like yeah. uh, cars around you but we, you don't really 100% understand the scale of the quantum realm so it doesn't yeah. it doesn't make sense <laughs> yeah uh, but now when I watched it again this week yeah. uh, preparing for this I saw it's clearly explained <laughs> 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 oh you see her clearly yeah. Uh, become bigger. But yeah. Yeah. That was just... I thought it was really cool that they... She like... She collapses into Scott's arms and they both shrink down to the size of... Uh, her. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's really like the main things. And they weren't even that main. But mm. yeah. Any closing thoughts on that? <laughs> um, it's like I said earlier, it's... Um, it's... It's one of those movies that uh, it's just kind of enjoyable. Like I don't know if I'd. I know you were you you had the whole thing where you like you can find analysis in any movie. You can analyze any movie, and it would be. It's not how I sound. You'd have a a takeaway from that. (laughs) It's not at all how I sound, but okay. (laughs) Carry on uh, defaming me. (laughs) I've. I kind of. I have movies that are like analysis and then just fun to watch and i would group this as fun to watch right just fun to experience mm. it's kind of a like avatar uh, okay avatars both yeah sure it's fun to experience it's yeah it it is fun to experience mm. um, you don't seem sure it is the it seems like you have hate in your heart but whatever <laughs> i've called it the comedic relief movie hmm Cause, yeah, and look, this is the thing uh, we've spoken about this a lot. But in Marvel movies, they don't give you time to grieve. Yeah, or they don't let a a sad moment be a sad moment. Yeah, even in pure straight up comedies, the a sad thing will happen, and the characters acknowledge that yeah. a sad thing has happened. Nobody like will make a joke. Yeah. Uh, they'll just have like a little bit of respect yeah in Marvel movies they <laughs> it's just someone will die and someone will just make a quip or something like uh, yeah ev- even like with the the Modoc death scene <laughs> 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 it's just an extended joke <laughs> 
<laughs> like I said, the funniest <laughs> joke of the movie. They have this issue, and I would say Thor: Love and Thunder was the biggest uh, perpetrator. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This Ant Man movie, I think it was a bit more appropriate in terms of comedy. Okay. Even though, like I said, <laughs> the death scene of Modok, but he's like a, you know. He's not like an emotional character. He's like a sci-fi yeah. weird he's just, thing. So he, yeah. yeah. He's kind of there to laugh at anyway. Mm. Any any other thoughts? Mm, no, that's about it for me. All right. You get two recommendations. Two recommendations mm. from... Uh, not two recommendations. What? As in one, two recommendations. Going to, as in... Oh, going to movies next. What? Our next topic... Oh, Yes. The next topic. Oh that yes. Okay. Yes. The next topic that we're going to is recommendations. Is recommendations. Yes. Not give me two recommendations. Okay. Yes. All right. Just so we clear. Yes. Yeah. Uh, bullet train. All right. That's that's uh, okay. That's that's one of those movies that's like you can experience it, but you can also analyze it, and I think it's a great movie, personally. Mm. Uh, but it's very kind of cliche in a way. <laughs> Like it's enjoyable, but cliche. Like mm. you can you you figure out what's happening very quickly. Mm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was made by the guys who made John Wick. Possibly, I'm mm. not even sure. Oh, yeah, but uh, is that your only recommendation? Um, yeah, it's the most important one. Well, I mean, you can Google later. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Or you can Google while I'm giving mine. Yeah. So, uh, what other recommendations? Yeah. No, that's it. Oh. <laughs> I, I assumed you had more. That's why. <laughs> I was thinking of something, but now I've forgotten it. So right. you can Google while I. Okay. So, I wa- uh, Ted Lasso came back this week. Okay. TV yeah. show about uh, American. Yeah. Coaching in the f- the Premier League. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I I I don't find it funny. Mm-hmm. It's just it's there's like a lot of uh, comedies now that are just not funny. They're yeah. just like tra- like dramedies. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. I don't know why I watch the show. You just watch yeah. it because you watch it. It's the final season is uh, this is the final season season three. Right. Okay. So you know. Yeah. I, I'm not trapped for much longer. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be out. I'll be out soon, so I might as well. Yeah. Yeah, but it's just very sad. Oh. I don't think I've ever laughed at Ted Lasso. Oh. But, yeah. Anyway, it's about football. That I like football. Yeah. So that <laughs> that's mainly the yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sunshine. What's Sunshine? It's a sci-fi movie from two thousand and seven. Okay. D- directed by Danny Boyle. Okay. Excellent movie. I watched it a long time ago, like maybe 2010. When okay. I was like on TV. Yeah. And I was just a child. I don't uh, you know, fully grasp. fully grasp it. I watched yeah. it this weekend. Outstanding. Okay. And I'm looking at it and looking at it in the context of movies that have come after like uh Gravity yeah. and Interstellar. Yeah. And there's another one that came out just like in that time period, right? Okay. I think they were all inspired. Well, they obviously inspired by like 2001 a Space Odyssey and like Solaris and yeah. uh, that kind of stuff, but I'm saying yeah. they all just came out in quick succession of each other, I think because Sunshine was such an outstanding movie. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I think it might be Danny Boyle's best movie. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> Why do you say oh wow? Oh wow. Do you know Danny Boyle's filmography? No. So then, <laughs> you have no frame of reference. <laughs> it just seems like one of those things that is like it's a big deal. Well, so it's an unpopular movie. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know spoilers. I'm not going to spoil yeah. it, but uh, I well I will spoil it. I yeah, mean, it's fine. So in the third act the character just goes crazy and becomes like a murderer a, okay. it becomes a slasher movie okay. and a lot of people get upset oh. about that right okay i actually like it a lot <laughs> so <laughs> and i think it follows the themes of the movie okay so that's why i i really in, uh, love it but there's a lot of people who get turned off by it yeah. it, it seems like very sudden shift into 
you know a different genre okay yeah but yeah so i haven't spoiled it but i'm just yeah you know uh would you say it's kind of okay no never mind mm mm-hmm. then i watch strange world oh strange world it's yeah it's an animated movie yeah um i do need to watch it so it's very indiana jones mm-hmm. well i the only reason i think that is because like the font Okay. they use for the like opening titles yeah. reminded me of indiana jones oh wow. okay so yeah <laughs> but but it is about <laughs> adventurers and explorers yeah. so you, yeah. you know that that too but it's like futuristic stuff indiana jones is like 20th century yeah that's why i'm you know okay yeah that's why i didn't think of that it's the only thought of but yeah it stars jake gyllenhaal yeah and uh, his son is jabuki young white you know that is no well i i think he's a comedian okay. but i know him from twitter oh he makes like really funny <laughs> okay. jokes okay. on twitter right uh well, obviously he's an actor of some sort because yeah. he's in this movie yeah. but i don't know like what his day job is like what he would describe himself as yeah that that's what i'm saying i just know him from twitter okay right uh yeah yeah uh, understand this is the recommendation section yeah but i don't think i'd recommend this <laughs> oh, wow <laughs> i'm just looking at the movies i watched l- this last week I, i didn't think about it too much but it's it's kind of fun yeah see and is hot see but it's not mind blowing it's not like see it didn't change my life <laughs> it's not avatar <laughs> that, that's what i'm saying you see you've got the the two categories you've got it's kind of fun it's analysis I can still analyze this movie okay but would you yes why because uh <laughs> don't you like when you're watching a movie have thoughts uh no my mind just goes completely blank All i right, don't well, have any thoughts this podcast is just like the thoughts i had <laughs> while watching a movie yeah so so yeah that's what <laughs> <laughs> that's all say i could there's a lot of uh, very like strong things in that movie Okay. You know what? I do recommend it. <laughs> right? Um I rewatched another movie. Okay. It's called Heat. Heat. Yes. Okay. First ever live action meeting of Al Pacino and Robert De Niro. Okay. They were in a movie called Godfather 2 together. Yes. But they were like in two separate timelines. Oh. So okay. uh De Niro played like a younger version of Michael's father. Right. when he was you know yeah. when he first uh, became a gangster and michael was played by al pacino yeah who's becoming a well at the end of the first godfather he became the godfather yeah <laughs> so <laughs> makes right. sense so those two stories parallel each other so they never like meet each other yeah heat is the first time they acted across each other okay uh yeah genuinely perfect movie perfect perfect okay. i watched okay. it a few Like I watched it in like 2019 for the first time. Yeah. And I gave it like a 9 out of 10. Okay. And I was like this is really good. Yeah. And my friend tells me it's overrated. Mm. Right? <laughs> Since then like I've watched it I watched it like two more times. Yeah. Before last night when I watched it. It's just so good. Okay. It's <laughs> an honestly perfect movie. Okay. Um uh, I don't know. not one gripe with it my heat heads in the audience will <laughs> <laughs> will you, agree with me yes you. me <laughs> me first and foremost but i'm sure yeah. i'm sure it's directed by michael man okay uh yeah insanely good movie okay what heat and by the way yeah do you like the dark knight uh yeah the dark knight is ripping off heat oh oh yes. <laughs> damn dark knight is You know like how Ant-Man is ripping off was it off us? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dark Knight is ripping off Heat. So there we go. <laughs> All the more reason to watch Heat. Yeah. Well, this is the thing. Um when I was younger, I I thought the Dark Knight was the best movie I've ever seen. Okay. But it came out in 2007, 2008. Uh, yeah. So I was like 10, 11 years old. Yeah. I had not seen enough movies, right? Now that I've you know watched a good amount of movies, now I can be like, "Oh, it's just a shitty re- re- rip off of Heat." Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. Well, not shitty. I I like the Dark Knight a lot. <laughs> yeah. But I'm saying it's not as good as Heat. Okay. 
Yeah, that's fair. All right. Cool. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I like it so much. I watched. I watched it again last night. Yeah. It's just one of those ones that I just keep coming back to. Okay. Uh, cocaine bear. Oh. How is that actually? <laughs> it's, it's it's very fun. Okay. Um. So this really happened. Yes. There was a smuggler. Yeah. They dropped cocaine in the woods. Yep. And the bear ate the cocaine. Yes. And the bear died. Yes. This movie is supposing, what if it didn't die? <laughs> what if it kept going? <laughs> what if it went on a rampage? <laughs> right. A lot of fun. Uh, and it knows exactly what it is. It's not trying to be high art. It's just trying to be good fun. Yeah. Hmm. <sighs> the lot. I have two more. Okay. So I watched 80 for Brady. 80, like 80 for Brady. Yes. Okay. It's about these 80 year old women who uh, won tickets to the Super Bowl to go watch <laughs> Tom Brady. <laughs> <laughs> it's a true story as well. It's uh, Obviously, it's a comedy, so like they've dramatized certain elements, but uh, yeah. it's a true story of like these old women who really love Tom Brady. <laughs> that is a beautiful thing. <laughs> Very. Uh, I don't really... I don't find it funny. Okay. It's just for old people. You, I don't know how to okay. say it. Yeah. But yeah, Jane Fonda, hot as ever. <laughs> She's like 80-something. <laughs> but still it. <laughs> Outstanding. Thank you, Miss Fonda. Miss, Mrs. Uh, all right. Then 65. Okay. It's... Uh, it's about turning 65. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's um, Adam... I keep wanting to say Adam Brody, but it's not. He's Kylo Ren. Oh, um, Driver. Adam Driver. Yeah. Right? He's uh, he's uh, 65 million years ago. Oh. Right? That's a long time ago. So he's like some from some alien planet yeah. where the people are humanoid. Okay. And he's transporting people and he gets stranded on Earth. Right. 65 million years ago. Okay. And he fights dinosaurs and shit. That's pretty cool. And he has to, like, most of the people on his plane dies, but he has to keep the survivors alive. Okay. So, yeah. And it's just yeah. them getting to the, this, like, ship that can take them away. Okay. Hmm. That sounds like, quite cool. Because the ship, like, broke up, right? So the, yeah. the part where everyone else was went to one place and the part where the, the backup ship went to the other place. Yeah. So that's why they, they had to, like, track 12Ks. Yeah. So, it's very um, us when we went hiking, <laughs> <laughs> and I almost died. <laughs> anyway, let's not talk about that. I was gonna say that movie with Will Smith and his son. I After, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, that's, I'm not. I know. Yeah. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Directed by M Night Shyamalan. Oh, I didn't know that. But I don't blame him. I blame Will Smith. Okay. It's one of those movies where, like, at the time, Shyamalan, he made uh, The Last Airbender. Oh. So he was yeah. like a pariah in Hollywood, right? Yeah. So Will Smith, he wanted to have a movie that was like a launch pad for his son. Yeah. But he needed someone, like, behind the camera that could, you know, like... Direct. Yeah, so he got M. Night Shyamalan in. Yeah. But Will Smith was pretty much in control of that, uh, that right, movie. Okay. Yeah. Chime Man was just there to, like I said, hold the camera. Yeah. <laughs> right. And the main thing about that movie that people don't like is they, they felt like Will Smith was pushing his son on us. Yeah. You know, like, you have to, like, like a actor. You can't force yeah. an actor on us. Yeah. Right. But, yeah. I think that's about it. Cool. Yeah. And I'm <laughs> glad I didn't say... How can I say this? And <laughs> once again, well, I do think I said once again a lot. Yeah, you did, but it's okay. Uh, what? The, but the audience needs to realize <laughs> <laughs> something happened once again. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, okay. Uh, do we have a sign off? Uh, yeah, we do. Well, okay. So look, this is what we need. We need you to rate, review, subscribe. Right. Yeah. Depending on whatever app you're using. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, if you write a review, it helps us, you know, in the algorithms. Yeah. And allows us to get placed in the 
you know like chart one percent the charts only fans <laughs> the charts <laughs> <laughs> so people they they could go look at the the movie charts and they would see perhaps see our podcast here but yeah. the more reviews the more interactions it gets you know within the various uh, apps yeah so like spotify you write a review there it yeah. would go on the spotify list but you know you write a, a review in apple then you would you know they yeah. only count for their specific yes <laughs> one so whatever app you're using please uh write a review five stars only if you don't have a five star review keep it yourself i don't <laughs> you don't want to hear that shit <laughs> or if you're on youtube and there aren't any stars you hit the like button like subscribe share yeah uh tell everyone you know hit the bell uh yeah. what else i don't be, know be uh notified of mm. when we post new things yes oh and then uh we have a website that we do right it's paceup-pod.github.io forward slash site yep don't put a www before just just start just <laughs> p-a-i-c-i-p dash pod dot github g-i-t-h-u-b dot i-o forward slash site s-i-t-e right okay that's where you'll find <laughs> as opposed to s-i-g-h-t uh, yeah <laughs> oh my god you know I'm trying to help the listeners out. Okay, I'm You're trying to cause chaos. Yeah. That's anyway. That's kind of my goal here. <laughs> so, that that's a website where you can find, like, our various links, like, to our social medias and yeah. to all the various uh, DSPs. Yeah. Uh, D- DSP is Digital Service Provider, I think. Yes. Yeah. Oh, but yeah, that yeah. that that's the the streaming apps of Spotify yeah. or whatever. That That's a DSP. Oh, but also the main one, Patreon. Patreon, right? Yeah. Because, you know, those other apps, they have our main feed, but the Patreon feed will have bonus commentaries and other bonus content. Yeah. We're actually recording the... Uh, Oscars. Uh, yeah, our thoughts on the Oscars after this. Yeah. So, subscribe to the Patreon. Uh, to hear some of that. Yeah. And... Au revoir! <laughs> Ta-ra! <laughs>